and welcome back to my channel. In today's tutorial we are going to get that nose drawn in of our Dalmatian. Um, now the nose may just be the only part of this but we're going to see if we can get the nose and maybe some of these spots near the nose drawn in. Um, yeah let's get going. Everything you need is linked below including the supplies used in this video. Link back to part one where we did the eye, we started our Dalmatian. Um, and links where you can find the reference photo and the line art. If you've got any comments, let me know, questions, and I will do my best to get back to you as quick as I can. Um, yeah, I'm just going to get straight into it. So I'm going to start with my dark sepia, and I'm just going to start by outlining the uh, shape of this nostril. So we're getting those darks mapped in first, very light pressure. You don't want to press too hard. And all I'm doing is just following the shape that I can see. So it's like an upside down comma is the actual nostril shape itself. Bring that down and then it goes darker there. And we do have some highlights in this nostril as well that we're going to have to um, make sure we keep. So I'm just outlining the shapes. That's all you need to do. Everything, like I mentioned repeatedly, <laughs> is all about the shapes that you see. And I'm just going to lightly map in there, and that nostril is coming up here, with like a little round tip here. Then the middle section of the nose, I'm going to map that line in, very lightly. This is all just very light pressure. And we've got a little lip there. And that's going to come down to there. So all I'm doing, I'm literally just mapping in the shapes. And then all the detail will come as we start building up this nose. Very lightly, all I'm doing is just mapping in the outside shapes. And I've not erased my graphite here because my graphite lines are quite light anyway. Um, so I, I know this nose is going to get quite dark. Now what I'm doing here is with the nostril, I'm using curved lines. So lines are sort of curved like that, coming out of the nostril. Just to give us that rounded effect that this part of the nose is going in to that nostril which is going to help us get that 3D effect because this part of the nose is going to be quite dark and that's going to come out of that nostril there and round. So I'm just starting to sort of build up a little definition to this nostril now. Also with the dark sepia, I've not changed, not changed the pencil and we're just mapping it all in. And then when you're happy with the shape that you've got to this nose, so I'm quite happy. I know that's light there and that's a bit of fur. Um, we're going to now start building up this colour. So what I'm going to do first is come in with my warm grey one and I'm going to apply the base layer across the whole of this nose. And this has given us a base layer to work up on and get some nice details and tonal values into this nose. I'm also going to be using quite a few of the cold greys going to sort of mix and match with the warm and the cold but I'm just going to use the warm grey one as my initial base layer across the whole of this nose. Using medium pressure we really want to get the two, the two for this paper flattened out. I'm not going over that nostril. That nostril is going to be black, so I'm just going to go straight in with the black when we get to that point and really darken it up. But just getting even coverage of warm grey one across this nose. Now, I've not done this bit of the nose because this is going to be fur, so I'm not worried about um, 
mapping that bit in yet. That'll come when we start making sure that the nose looks like it's in place. Sorry, I just realised you're on a bit of an angle there. Hopefully that's a bit clearer now what, you, uh, what we've done. So we've mapped in the shape of the nose with the dark sepia first and then we've gone in and added um, warm grey one as our base layer. I'm then going to come in with cold grey two on the top of this nose here and I'm using circular motions. This way if any if we have any heavier pressure as we're doing this it's just going to look like some of the texture on the nose. So I'm coming in now And this is all just over the top half of this nose with that cold grey too. That's going to give us a nice little blue tone over the top of our warm grey. Just doing another layer. So I've done two layers of this warm grey too in circular motions over the top of that nose. Then taking cold grey four. Because uh, in this corner it's a bit darker, so I'm going to start building this up again. Circular motions with the cold grey four. I'm just gonna bring in the cold grey four and really build up nicely the shadows as we start building this up. Now we are going to need to make this nostril really dark, and the reason we need to get that nostril dark sort of next is because that's going to be our darkest point of the nose and it's going to help us judge the rest of the values within this nose. I'm just building up this cold grey four because I know it's going to be darker here but I don't know how dark we need to go. Do we need to go to a cold grey six or is cold grey four going to be enough? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that um, dark sepia again and I'm just going to start to really apply harder pressure now and we're going to really darken this up. Now when you come to this nostril we need this to curl in and round. So I'm going to make sure I'm using those curved edges and tapering those lines. We want this to look like the, this colour, this part of the nose is going in and round into that nostril. And this part of the nose, this area here of the, nos of the nose, the outside edge of the nostril, is going to be dark but we're going to build it up probably with the dark sepia so that's why I'm kind of just tapering those pencil edges but you can see how dark we're now going with that um, nostril and the same here we need to bring this nostril in and round bring it round here And here it's curving round. And then dark in this nose. And I'm just going to taper this a colour. So can you see now how we're starting to really get a nice dark nostril? Um, I'm actually going to take my black and in the centre of this nostril for sure come in with a dark black and just lighten my pressure as it blends into that dark sepia. I'm just feeling like the dark sepia just isn't quite dark enough. And the black along there. Okay, yeah, I'm happier with that. That looks uh, a lot better now. So, um, I'm going to come in first of all with my Payne's Grey. And we know that this part of the nostril is dark, so I'm going to circular motions, very light pressure at first with the uh, paint's grey and along the bottom here. And I'm going to bring that paint's grey down here. Now, if you've followed my um, other nose tutorial, I've done um, I did one where I used just three colours, uh, black, dark indigo and the sepia. 
you could you could um do this nose using just the three colors if you really wanted um obviously i'm doing this like i would a commission and i want this to be um as detailed and as colorful as i can so i'm using all the colors <laughs> and i'm coming in now with the paints gray again over the top but you can use less colors you don't need to use the exact same amount that i do um i'm coming in with the earth green um i just want a little hint of this green showing through the nose i use this earth green in pretty much all my portraits uh, usually we haven't used it as often in these tutorials but i just love this color very very useful so just over the top it's going to give us a nice hint of um that green now what i'm going to do is i'm going to take my one gray six i've got a really sharp point and i'm just going to start building up some of these texture shapes now again it doesn't need to be accurate but we just want to build in some texture on this nose and I'm using the warm grey 6 to do this. You could also use the dark sepia, uh, it might be just a little bit too dark and I'm just following the shapes that I can kind of see, building them up, not worrying if they're not exactly a reference photo, remember your reference photo is a guide. And I'm just building up some little shapes. We're going to go over the top of this, but those shapes will hopefully show through ever so slightly. So you can see we're just starting to build up the texture on this nose. And this will take some time to build up. I'm doing it across all of this nose. It's mainly the top half of the nose. This is the part where we're getting quite a bit of light hitting the nose. So we want to see some of this texture. I'm doing just a few little lines on that side. So just a few little lines. Bringing that across. Okay, so we've now built up some texture on that nose with the one gray six. Let's move my pencils out of the way. Coming back in with the cold grey 2, I'm going to go over the top, light pressure, but this is just going to help blend that in nicely. And then I'm back to the cold, uh, Payne's grey and I'm going to use a bit more pressure now, medium pressure, I'm just going to start really darkening up this part of the nose. So making sure that those lines curve into that nostril and around. And along here. See, we can really start to see this nostril being built up now. Uh, the cold grey 4 may need to go a little darker here, but I think the cold grey 4 should be okay. Um, I'm going to just take the um, cold grey 6 just to bring in a little bit of detail. Over that cold grey for just lines. Okay. Uh, now we have the other side of this nose. So we are going to take our nugget. We have a brownish tinge on the this side of her nose or his nose. So I'm just gonna bring in the nugget along this half of the nose. And then just lightly blend it into the rest of the nose and along here like so then I'm going to take my warm grey 5 and just darken over the top of that nugget And then take my dark sepia and just bring in that darker line again because we know that nostrils there. We can't see it because of the angle of the head, but we know that the nostrils there. So we're just making an, indi an indication 
and then I'm just darkening along that nostril edge and the bottom of this nostril as well. I'm going to take my black very lightly. I'm just going to darken the centre of this nose. And then take the warm grey five. I'm going to darken. Start to darken here. And along the bottom here. Remembering to follow the shape of that nose, some, adding some curved lines just to bring, make that nose look like it is curling. Like so. So I'm just going to take the walnut brown and blend over the top of that one grey five. And in these areas that I've left for highlights, very lightly, I'm not pressing hard at all, but we want that brownish tone to come through the bottom of that nose. And then I'm going to take my dark sepia and I'm just going to really start darkening up this side of her nose. He or she, whichever you've decided for your dog. <laughs> I'll probably interchange between the two. And along the bottom here is going to be darker. So you can see now we're really starting to get the shape of this nose really coming together. I'm going to just take my black along the bottom of this nose because it's quite dark here. And along that side. Yeah, and I'm just going to fade that out. Okay, I'm back to my one grey five. Over the top. Just going to help with that blending. Uh, back to the Payne's grey. I just want this area of her nose to look more blended. And bring in some blue tones down this shadowed area of the nose. Dark sepia. And now I'm just kind of going in and just darkening up some of these lines that I feel just need to be a little darker. Okay, and then I'm going to come in with my putty eraser. So if you've got an eraser, putty eraser, a uh, kneaded eraser, one that you can... Um, make the point, get it, bring it into a little point. You can use a Tombow eraser or a normal eraser and I'm just going to dab away some of the pigment. I just need that to be a bit of a smaller point on the top of this nose and it's just going to add a little bit more life, some little random highlights. You're not taking away loads of pigment, you don't want it to go really really white. But we're just lifting some pigment for detail. I'm then just going to take my slice tool here and bring in those highlights. Just along the bottom of this nose. And then I'll take the white. over the top okay and now we have a nice looking nose for our dalmatian so we'll start bringing in some of the um fur around the nose to um plant that nose in place for want of a better way to phrase it <laughs> so we need to add in the top of the nose here so i'm coming in with the cold gray wool all the way up to that little lip that we got going on there And I'm just going to blend over the top of that nose so that it all looks like it's one part. 
an that lip. There's going to be a cold grey one there. And then I'm just going to take my putty eraser, lift some of that graphite, and take my warm grey one where we've got that spot on the top of the nose. So we've now got the difference between the warm and the cold areas. I'm going to take my cold grey free because this is quite a dark cold bluish area and I'm making sure that this is smooth. This is really soft and smooth on the top of the nose. So circular motions, making sure that it's even pressure across the whole of that top area. And in that little lip. And then I'm going to take my warm grey five and just start building up some of this fur that's going to be coming in. So following that direction, constantly looking back at my reference photo, seeing what direction. My fur is going in on this nose. Very light pressure on the long here, but it's still using that one grey five. And then I'm going to use the cold grey four on this top half. And then we'll go to the Payne's Grey and just blend it outwards. So I need to darken that warm grey area, which is easy to do. As you start building up these colours, you start realising, oh, actually, I need to just darken here a little bit more. I'm just going to bring a few hairs over this smoother area. that downwards so I'm just going to go back to the warm grey five and just darken and blend back a bit more into that Payne's grey a few little dots there and then we've got one of the spots above the nose um, and then we need to bring in the white fur that we can see so I'm just going to sharpen my warm grey one again lifting that graphite because we don't want any graphite to be showing and then the warm grey warm along there and I'm just going to take the light uh, light flesh beige red beige red very lightly I don't want this to look too pink and then I will blend them together with the white So harder pressure now with the white just to really blend and burnish that warm grey one and beige red into the paper. Uh, my cold grey two, I'm just going to come back over that bit there. Okay, so we've got the top of the nose looking like it's in place now. So we're just going to sort of come down here and then see how much we can get done of her nose. So, first of all, I'm going to start off with the lip or the flu that is behind. So, this is the darker lip. So, I'm just going to lift that graphite. And this is quite a cold area. So, I'm going to use the cold grey one as the base layer. See those cold tones? And then it goes into warmer tones. So, I'm not going to cover the whole this lip with the cold grey one so i've got the cold grey one again i'm going to use the beige red very very lightly very lightly over the top there and then we do have a um spot underneath so i'm going to take my nugget first and i'm just going to bring in some loose little 
loose hairs coming out from that nose and then that's going to go down and let me just make sure I'm looking at the right bit yeah down into this spot and I'm just going to mark out this spot with the nugget very lightly now we've not got a base layer under that nugget that is fine what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in with a warm grey one over the top and I'm going to bring that over the top of that nugget and that's just going to push that nugget into the pave into the pavement gosh <laughs> into the pigment <laughs> um, into the paper and then we've got that nice brownish undertone and then we can take our I want I think I want a lighter warm grey so I'm taking the warm grey four over the top and then I'll blend that outwards and then I'm going to take the white over this coal grey and beige red area now I didn't do this at first because I didn't know if I needed to darken it but I'm happy with that and then the warm grey five just to darken along the edge of that spot and blend it outwards okay so we're starting to really build up this area now um, I'm going to come in for the rest of this um, bottom lip with the one grey one as a base layer. So again, just lifting some of that graphite. And now I'm using the one grey one as my base layer. I think this tutorial might be a fairly quick one. Again, through these sections, not too bad actually. I'm saying that. I always jinx myself, don't I, whenever I say this. Oh, we'll be done soon. <laughs> we never are. <laughs> right, we now have a pinkish area. So, beige red first. This might be too light. I do have a feeling it'll be light. But I'm going to bring in this beige red. Which is going to blend nicely into that cold grey one area anyway. Um, and then I'm going to take the Burnt Sienna very lightly and I'm just going to see if we can get that nice pinkish orangey brown kind of tone with the Burnt Sienna and then I'll go over the top of that again with the Beige Red um, I quite like that colour, that's a nice colour so you can see at this area, I'm not focusing on details, just focusing on the tones um, that we can see. And then I'm going to come in with the walnut brown for that darker spot. We're going to get a brownish tone um, coming underneath this lip first. And then I'll take the one grey five over the top of that walnut brown, making sure I blend in these areas nicely together. Pressing quite hard with the one grey five. Okay, and then I'm going to take that burnt sienna again along the bottom. Followed by, um, I think the one grey five is going to be too much, so the one grey three over the top of that burnt sienna just to knock it back and make it look like it's in shadow. Okay, I'm just going to take the dark sepia very lightly. I'm just going to darken some of that spot up. I'm not covering it all up with the dark sepia, just enough. And then I'll go over that with the one grey one, just to blend that out. Okay, 
Okay, I'm happy with that. See, it doesn't take long at all. So I've now got my kneaded eraser and again I'm just going to lift some of the graphite and we're going to bring in some of these darker spots around the uh, nose. So I'm going to come in with the warm grey one. Sort of just where that dark black spot is around the nose. I'm going to get this one in first. I'm going to go over the top of that with a cold grey one as well. Okay, we again have a brownish tone, so I'm just going to take the nugget this time. Um, that actually needs to be extended a bit longer, so I'm just going to bring the warm grey one further down. And then I can use that nugget over the top. And it comes to about there. And so that's the uh, nugget in that bit. And then I'm going to use the walnut brown in this area. This is just to add a bit more depth to the piece. Nugget brown, uh, walnut brown there, blending into that nugget. Uh, yeah, this this will just these colours will just add a bit more depth into the piece. Um, and then I am going to take the Payne's grey, and I'm blending the fur down from that nose. Again, using short short lines, we've got very short fur on this nose. The fur around the nose is very short, so we're making sure those pencil lines are sharp. And I'm just building it up. From here. And then I'm going to take the warm grey five over the top of the nugget. And then we'll go to my dark sepia, which I is there. And again, this is just to add in some of those hairs, some extra details. And I'm doing this with a dark sepia. And I'm bringing it especially down from that nose. We want this nose to look like it belongs there. And every time we do it section by section, we want it to look like it's always been done. Like we haven't actually just done this section followed by this section. We want it all to blend smoothly. Remember the animal that we draw in. We want it to look smooth and to get it smooth you take as long as you need there is no no rush um, and then I'm just going to take the cold grey one over the top there so you can see now we've really started to build up the shapes around this nose now she's got a bit of a pink spot um, going on so um, I think I'm just wondering whether we use I think we're going to use the warm grey um, I don't think it'll look right with the cold grey so I'm just going to dab away some of that graphite again and I'm just going to bring in the warm grey one and I'm going to come up to the edge of this nose here this area here is quite blue in tone so we're going to have to use the cold greys there. So this area we're going to do with the one grey one. Now when we start building up this fur around her nose, we can see the detail. We're going to have to really focus on that fur direction. Especially on the nose. The fur seems to change directions quite a lot on the nose. So as long as we're aware of that, 
and you will be fine. So I'm going to take the warm grey free and I'm just going to bring this black spot a little further down. It comes about here. And the warm grey five. Just little hair details. That's all it is. Just little hairs. That way as well. So you can see I'm always looking at my reference photo and I'm always looking to see what direction that fur is going in. Um, I'm then going to take my gold and using the gold we're just going to start to blend. So we're using the gold as like a grey. So for anybody who did the Italian Greyhound tutorial I use the gold and the copper as like grey colours and this is going to be the transition colour between this these black spots into that pinkish muzzle that we've got going on. Again, I'm always looking at the fur direction and I'm going to bring it along that spot. So I'm blending into the darker colour and then bringing it up and out into that whiter or what will be white fur. Like so. And then I'm going to take the beige red over the top. Of the warm grey one. So this is acting as like another base layer. So we're just building up the colour. Blend over some of that gold. And then I'm going to use the cinnamon. And I need to get a new one out. And with the cinnamon, we're actually going to start bringing in some of that detail. So I'm going to really focus on the fur direction. And build up the detail within this um, pink muzzle. And I'm making sure that I really focus on that fur direction. The fur is changing directions quite a lot on this muzzle. And that's something you really want to pick up, especially as it's such short, fine hair. Now, you don't need to draw in every single hair that you can see. You just need to draw in a few, just to give the suggestion of the direction that this fur is going in. And then as we come down the bottom of this muzzle, it's a bit darker. So I'm going to take the Venetian red. Um, that was not the Venetian red. And I'm not going to press hard, but I'm just going to bring in this Venetian red along the bottom of her lip here. And lightly bring it up over that cinnamon. And then I'm going to take the gold again, following the fur direction, very lightly. I'm not pressing hard and I'm just bringing in this gold for a little extra detail. And then I'm going to use this Venetian red for some of these uh, whisker markings. Just underneath where we're going to have some whiskers showing later on in the drawing. Okay, let's do the top half of her face. So take the ivory. Because this is a nice bluish area now. I'm bringing it up to where we've got a spot. And then I'm going to bring, excuse me, very lightly the cold grey one. So I'm not pressing too hard here. We want this to be like a faded edge. We want this cold grey to fade. Just remove that graphite. And then I'm going to take the uh, beige red again, very lightly along there, just bring it down ever so slightly, and then take the white, and the white is just going to help us get that nice faded edge look along the top of that nose there. So you can see we started to really focus on fading this edge out. 
So we've added colour, but then we've just kind of pushed that pigment into the paper and it's given us a nice faded edge. Now as I come back down here, this is a bit dark, so I'm just going to take the cold grey too, making sure once again I'm following that fur direction. That cold grey too down. Now we do have a spot here, so we're going to get that in in a minute. I'm just focusing on this um, cold grey 2 area. I'm then going to take my uh, cold grey 4 and I'm going to make sure your cold grey 4 is very sharp and we're going to add in some really sharp details. So I'm really focusing on the fur direction here and I'm just bringing in some short lines just to highlight Oh, that pencil pigment keeps breaking off the details but also the fur direction again I'm not including every detail that's in the reference photo but enough to show that what we're doing and the direction that that fur is going and then I'm just going to do the same here I'm just going to bring some of the little bits of fur off of that spot with a warm grey four. So it's a lot back and forth between the warm and the cold greys. Um, cold grey one, just going to smooth, and then back to the cold grey four. So when you're doing white fur like this Dalmatian, where there's not a lot of colour, mainly the warm and the cool tones, you're really focusing on those shifts between the yellowish tones that you can see or the blue tones and that'll indicate whether you're using a cold grey or a warm grey. Okay, let's get this spot in. So with the spot, I'm going to use the cold grey one as a base layer. And I'm going to bring that cold grey one just where the spot is so that we don't get lost. Okay, so we know we've got a spot here and that's what we're going to focus on um, building up and again along this top edge I'm just going to bring in a bit of the walnut brown very light pressure just kind of mapping in some of the shapes but just going to add a bit of a brownish tinge to this black spot now this is a black and white dalmatian it's not a liver and white so we don't want black to be the prevalent uh, brown sorry to be the prevalent color want to make sure it does look like black black and white spots but this is just going to help bring some warmer tones to some of these spots they're not all blue in tone so it's just going to add a bit more depth to a piece so not not a lot of walnut brown but just enough then i'm taking the Payne's gray and i'm just going to use light pressure at first to build in the fur direction now with this spot we can really see how that fur changes direction. So we want to make sure that we're really making sure that you're constantly looking back at that reference photo and you're going to map in that direction and we're going over the top of that walnut brown now. And I'm applying this Payne's Grey across the whole of this spot. So always, always looking back. Because just by doing this one spot, can you see how much that fur direction has changed? This is why it's so important that you keep referencing that reference photo. Keep making sure that you are following that fur direction. And then I'm just going to use... We're going to blend all this in nicely together in a minute. I'm just going to create some little rough edges there. So that's the Payne's Grey, just one layer of the Payne's Grey. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take the Payne's Grey and I'm just going to apply harder pressure. And this is where it's darker and um, where 
I don't want it to be quite black yet, but we want it to just be a darker patch of spots. Now I will be using the slice tool again to remove some of those white flecks of hair that are running through this. Um, so again, you can use the tape method or you can use the um, indenting method. But remember with the indent method, you have to do that before applying this colour. So I'm just bringing that over there. Um, I'm then going to get the cold grey 6. I'm just going to darken some of this area up. So I'm using medium pressure now because I really want to start darkening up areas. And along here. Always following that fur direction. Always keeping an eye on that fur direction. And now I'm coming in with a black and I'm just going to press a bit harder and really darken up some of the areas on this black spot. And I'm just going to bring it over here, just glazing over the black, the Payne's grey and the cold grey here. And then this area is a bit darker, so I'm just using harder pressure to bring that spot in. And I've always focused on that fur direction, always, always focus on that fur direction. Then I'm taking the Payne's Grey and I'm just going to bring in some little flecks of fur to indicate that there's a little direction here. Okay, I'm then going to take the Warm Grey one. along here and we're just going to start connecting this up to the area that we've already drawn in. So that's the Warm Grey one. And then the cold grey one, and I just need to remove some graphite there. So we want that faded edge. And again, I'm just going to bring in the cold grey one. And very lightly. And I'm doing it lightly along the edge of this nose, because I want that edge to fade. We don't want that edge to be as noticeable, we want it to just fade into the paper give us a really nice effect and I'm blending over that warm grey one in that area and then blending okay and then I'm going to take the ivory and I'm taking the ivory over this warm grey one not pressing hard just want that hint of the ivory and then I'm going to grab my white and we're just going to press hard and burnish, really push that pigment into the paper. And especially along this edge, we want that nice edge. And this is just going to help us get a nice blend between these two sections that we've done separately, but it's all going to look like it's part of the same dog. I'm just going to take the cold grey two. I'm just going to bring a little bit down here. Okay, so if I just move that piece of paper and bring her into the camera, hang on. So I've just brought her into shot. You can see now how we're really starting to connect these two areas together. We've got a nice white white dog coming together with her spots really starting to show. Um, so it's taken us a little bit of time to do this area, but it's really worth it with white fur, taking your time, doing it slow and building up those greys on white paper especially, you're getting such a really nice effect. So let's just uh, keep going. So I'm bringing my warm grey one in again, just down here. This is acting as my base layer. So 
and then I'm just going to go over the top of that with the cold grey one. ever so lightly then I'm taking my Payne's grey and I'm just indicating some of those looser hairs within this spot so when we think of these spots you think of them as like I guess like a whole spot like a polka dot spot sorry I've just realized it's a bit off the screen isn't it there you go um but when it comes to the Dalmatians they are quite broken up, so they're not true round spots as such. They are broken up in places. Um, I'm going to take my cold grey free. And that's the effect that we need to create. We need to get in the darkest spots, but then we need to start building up these little bits of fur that just ensures that it looks as realistic as possible. Uh, back to the warm grey five. Just some of these little stray hairs to indicate that we know that it's not a proper round spot with a hard edge, that there is bits of fur. This is the one cold grey free. And that's all I'm mapping in now around this spot. Back to the Payne's grey. And I'm going to do the same with um, this spot that we did last time. Um, it's a bit lighter, so I'm just going to take the cold grey free. I'm going to start adding in some of these short stray hairs. I'm going to start really making this look as realistic as possible. Um, and then the warm grey free. We started doing this last time. We started bringing in some of these looser hairs. But we're just going to bring in a few more, especially um, on this spot. Um, and we're just going to take the cold grey six. And I think I want to just really darken. So, a medium pressure, and I'm just going to darken some of this. The cold grey six. Uh, cold grey four. So we've got some hair coming in here. So this is just little details now. It's really going to help push the R piece further. And I'm just going to bring some cold grey for four still. So here you see how just by building up some of these darker bits of fur, just really bring in that little bit extra to the piece. Oops, don't draw like that. <laughs> uh, then the paint's grey, just going to darken. And by doing it this way, we're focusing on that fur direction as well. So we're starting to build up some of the extra details within the... Um... Sorry, I just realised you can't see what I did then. So I just added in some of the loose fur around the eye with the warm grey four. Now this is the Payne's grey and I'm just bringing in some of those darker details. I need to make sure I'm double checking what I'm doing. Um, but yeah, this is also showing the fur direction because you're focusing on the fur direction Looking back at that reference photo all the time when you're bringing in some of these marks It's going to start really focusing on that fur direction in the actual drawing as well then the cold grey 2 
this would have looked good on drafting film actually I, I'm quite tempted one day actually to do a tutorial on drafting film because um, obviously I've done a lot on the Fabriano but the drafting film is really good especially for the slice tool really really good for the slice tool to be used on um, and then I'm going to take the warm grey free back underneath so do you see just by adding these little extra details now we've really started to bring this face to life I'm really happy with how it's looking. Um, I'm going to take the nugget, just bring some stray hairs down. Oh, I want to draw more Dalmatians. <laughs> uh, back to the Payne's Grey. I'm just going to bring that piece of paper over here. Just some extra little details. I'm just going to darken this black spot up because it's not quite dark enough. I'm going to go in with the warm grey 5. Okay, that's the one row five. Right, then the beige red. And I'm just going to bring that across here. Um, I'm actually debating whether we stop about here because we're going to start coming across her mouth. Um, and I think we need to do the rest of this as one part. The rest of her nose and muzzle is one part. Um, this is the cold grey free. So yeah, I think we're going to stop here, which I know it's a bit shorter um, of a tutorial, but I don't want to start the next part until um, we're ready to really get going with the rest of her mouth. So the next part will be finishing off her mouth and the rest of her cheek. Um, but I'm happy with the progress we've done today. We've got a really nice nose. Um, let me zoom you out. So yeah, we've got a really nice nose coming along. We've connected the two sections together and we've really started amping up the amount of detail within these spots. Um, and it's really, really starting to come to life. It's I think it's looking good. Um, I hope you're really enjoying this tutorial. I know I'm enjoying drawing this one for you. Um, so if you've got any comments, leave them down below and I will get back to you. Um, any questions, anything like that. Um, the next part, like I say, we'll finish her mouth and start coming across her face. Um, we've got a lot of this pink um, muzzle to do. And I will see you all in the next part. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Bye, everybody.